Hi, my name is Penn Ward. Kent Osborne. Cole Sanchez. Salam Alaikum. Rebecca Sugar. Jesse Moynihan. Tom Herbick. This one's too young. Written by Tom and Jesse. Jesse. Who don't usually work together. Yeah, we've done two boards together. Three. Three? <coughs> Collabo. I remember Tom uh, was always wanting to work with Jesse Moynihan. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was always like, wanted to be like Cupid and match them up with each other. I need to try this. Okay. And then it happened. Yeah, it came out real nice. Jesse and I were uh, <laughs> pen pals for a long time. Uh, comics pen pals for years. And we didn't meet in person until Jesse moved out to work on the show. Yeah, um, Tom was next door neighbor, or his brother, his twin brother was next door neighbors with good friends of mine in Brooklyn. And I was making zines and uh, little mini comics and they had them at their house. And Tom's brother picked one up, I guess. And that's how Tom found my stuff. And then he started writing me emails, and then we started sending each other comics and stuff in the mail for years. And here we go. Here we are. Uh, same kind of story with Andy Rusino. She was another one of my pen pals that ended up working on the show. Although we apparently met, and I don't remember it before he came in and got here. I mean, we should talk about the episode. Yeah. So we've got uh, Wizard Steps, the motif of Wizard Steps, which became a big plot point in some minor way. <laughs> uh, I think it's important. It's not a big aspect of the show, but it has a significance. And here we go. Here's a Lemon Grab's first appearance here. Uh, voiced by Justin Roiland. And Justin texted me. He couldn't make it. But he said, mention... Oh, wait, what? Uh, gross. He said something else. The first thing he said was, talk about how kind and sweet I am. <laughs> And he says, oh, and then he just says, also mention I have a naughty side to bring up that I'm loyal and loving. Uh, I'll say, it, there you go. I'll did, say this about Justin. When he comes into the record, he's, like, very dry. And then at, by the end, he's covered in sweat. Oh. <laughs> well, in a literal he, sense, he's... He no. screams, so, yeah, dry, not his sense of humor, his body. <laughs> his, <laughs> his hair and his arms. It's a juice. Lemon juice. Yeah. This is a little cold bit right here that Cole added. Why'd you yeah. add this, Cole? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you yeah, do that? I think it was, pen, it was a pen note. And then uh, I just added that scene in there, but I can't remember the reason why. I'm sure that if yeah. we thought about it for one second, we could remember and yeah. figure out why, but there's no time. Wasn't it changing it so that she created him? No. Yeah. Center bun's so nasty. <laughs> Went in there. Uh, so maybe we should talk about the evolution of, of Lemon Grab, right? Yeah, is that who, sort of important? Who drew, who drew him first? Uh, it was uh, mostly J- Jesse drew like a nude, a little nude man, and then I put the clothes on him, and then that was it. And that was the Tom, pretty much. Tom complete. gave him the sword. And you chant in the outline. His name was like Lemon Sour. His name, his lem was his name was Lemon Sour. <laughs> the Earl of uh, Earl of Lemon, Lemon Sour. Sour, and uh, he was sort of un- a little bit undefined. And Tom and I had a had a powwow about uh, how to make him stranger and more distinct, so that people would remember him as a villain. And uh, I think we got it. Did a good job. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, then and Justin Roiland. Brought it to this ne- next level. Put the frosting on the cake. Yeah. <clears throat> it was really surprising to hear those voice records come back. It was like a a dream came yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. He he was written awesome, but Justin Roiland, I think, is the reason that he keeps returning. Yeah. He's it's shocking to hear. Because uh, he's so amazing. Super, <laughs> super funny. Uh, so which one of you <laughs> was it? I remember thinking, like, as soon as this came back, I was like, well, I guess we're going to have to do some more lemon grabs. Because this is, you know, it's like too distinct to just have him be a one-off character. And y'all were talking about, like, how to top, how to write his catchphrase, unacceptable, in a new way that wasn't just rehashing, you know, it wasn't just... uh, That was tough in the second one. 
that we did. I tried. I've never used it again. I deliberately, but stubbornly, <laughs> I haven't ever used it again. But Jesse, you put it in there. I put it in there. I think Tom, uh, Steve Wolfhard has said unacceptable. Probably. It's my own little <clears throat> personal uh, symbolic gesture. Yeah, you don't want when a character like that to become who gets famous for a catchphrase, and then you want to bring them back and please everybody watching, but also have an artistic integrity about it. Uh, you gotta find a new way to make him, make him <laughs> just as good as he was the, on, the, uh, on the first appearance, but also not a rerun of the first appearance. So it's a tough rope to walk. Funny Tom sequence right here. Thanks. You mean when they punched him in the stomach yeah. and pushed him on the ground? And then they take <laughs> off running. <laughs> That's little Jesse. That was the Jesse transition bit right there. Nice. We'll work together Pretty sure that was, uh, that the was that my was idea? So Punching him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, it was kicking in the shins in the in the, in the outline, I remember. Oh. And I, I ramped up the violence. Thank you for releasing me from the dungeon early, Master Lemongrab. Oh, and here's the mysterious um, reveal that all food comes from Mars that no one on the internet cared about. That I thought everyone was going to flip out <laughs> about this world-building detail, and yet uh, it seems to go under the radar. Wait, wait, did you write Mars, or was that Steve Little? Steve Little accidentally said Mars, and uh, we told him to keep talking so that we could interrupt him. Yeah. And then he, yeah. Uh, but I got really excited about it after, you know, that idea that food gets shipped from Mars. Uh, and you see it now, too. You see it. <laughs> yeah. You see it happening. Maybe in the at the time it was a little abstract for people to think it meant anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was a very Philrinda esque uh, sp uh, goop barf spray. Very shiny. Philrinda. He's eating the dirt! Splash it now! I was working on a show, another CN show, about a blue cat. And uh, all the writers on that show were. Speaking. If you ever do that to me, I'll never speak to you. I, I thought it was really mean <laughs> because we. It, it's like you've been working all day, and then you go buy lunch, and, it, and then someone ruins it. It costs, yeah. it costs like $20. <laughs> <gasps> oh, that's A little PB. This is the only episode with a little PB. Yeah, know. what's that about? What's that all about? How come we... Why did we go back to status quo, Pen? It seems cruel, almost. <laughs> uh, I remember all those words on the internet. Yeah. People, My ship has sunk. Uh, whatever. I don't know. We, <laughs> this rule, we got our own, you know... We're not out there to give people a hard time. <laughs> We're just trying to, trying to make quality entertainment. Plop dumps and waggle sags. I never really get to act like a kid. I mean, this but society can't function without bubble gum being in charge. First. Yeah, she even explains that. Yeah. Why do we need to explain? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's tragic, but it makes a lot of sense. Not necessarily, milady. <laughs> He's a pink inside. What's yeah. that about? <laughs> Then what's the deal with that? It's <laughs> a reference to a certain comedian. <laughs> no, I, I invented that. That's how I talk to be uh -oh. funny. Uh oh. <laughs> well, so we, want, we wanted this episode to end with sacrifice. Yeah, I remember Tom being like, I got it. I figured it out. I don't know how to handle this end, end part. Uh, I wanted it to be not totally saccharine sweet and that's why she has a giant ridiculous thing on her head because you need a little a little dropper full of uh, weirdness to keep it from getting too schmaltzy I am HO I know princess is that in my honest opinion or in my humble opinion humble uh, at least the way I say it I always vacillate I A V. Vaseline? Is that a word? Vaseline? Oscillate? Oscillate? Oscillate, I think, makes more sense. 
I just made up a word. Oh, no, I think you're family. right. Well, I think, yeah, it's like smoothly, oh, slipperily but, transitioning uh, between. Oh. Mm. Maybe? Do you <laughs> Somebody look it up. Hinden Welch was uh, <laughs> excited that we returned to status quo. Was, was she? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 she was she was very concerned <laughs> when the, that episode when she became thirteen. <laughs> I loved this ending. I felt it. So CP Sanch, right? Hey man, you mean the, the you mean steps? the wizard part or that part that this, just happened? This part. It's the, this, the whole uh, end of this. Oh. <laughs> Tom, Tom's part of the ending was also. Top notch. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but this is Cole's part. It was good too, and it was real nice. Oh, Cole, you you wrote Not, this part? Yeah, but about with, going up the wizard steps and with, stuff. With a bit of input oh. from Tom and Penn. Yeah, yeah, or like, I knew this video game stuff I had boarded, but I don't remember. Then, uh, they got uh, added to. I don't remember what was mine, but all that wizard, the whole monologue about the wizard steps is Cole. I see what you're saying. It's important to the. Mythology of yeah. of Adventure Time, I think. Trying to make some in, sort of indirect foreshadowing or something. Kiss, kiss the mic, Cole. Trying to make some indirect <laughs> foreshadowing. <laughs> Can you guys? Is that good? We. I liked it. I appreciated it. All right, we gotta pull ourselves together. <laughs> I, need, I need to pull myself. Together. Time for a snack break. No, I'm just kidding.